Let's make some super easy and fun junk journal ephemera using vintage children's books. I have 10 simple ideas for you, which we will be creating here together. Also, I want to share some tips on where you can find such books. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Thank you so much for being here. So where can we find vintage children's books? The most obvious and best places to find vintage children's books are, of course, flea markets, garage sales, estate sales, Goodwill or thrift stores. But if you don't have that possibility, you can also find some online. One obvious option is eBay. I typed in the search term vintage children's books and clicked on the filter for results up to $12. And here are the kind of results that you get. Another option is Etsy. Again, I put vintage children's books in the search field and I applied the filter for under $20. So here are the kind of books you can purchase there. So there are other options if you don't have the possibility to find any in your surroundings. And if you would like to share any other online shops selling affordable vintage children's books, please leave a comment below the video for other viewers to explore as well. We have such an amazing junk journal community, so let's help each other out here. So let me show you some of the children's books I have found at my Goodwill. So I go there regularly and check the vintage children's books especially and have found a lot of treasures throughout the years. These here I actually just found yesterday. So there's this one. These are all in German because I am in Vienna, Austria. We speak German. <laughs> and this one has a lot of really cute squirrel images here. Then the same series here, we have a doe, also absolutely adorable. Look at this guy, he's so cute. There's this bird. Oh, what was the name of this bird? Is he from South Africa? I forgot. I have a collage with him. A hoopoe, I think, right? A hoopoe. <laughs> There's a tiny doe. Just so adorable. Look at this one. Then we have this one. This one, as you can see, has kind of different drawings. And I don't like all of these, but I think some of these are absolutely adorable. So this is definitely a different style. For example, this would make a really cute like page or pocket or something. These, I think, are adorable. Imagine this in a junk journal. Even this one. This one even. This one is called Prince Butterfly. <laughs> and it has some cute fairy images here as well. The images on the left side, this is always the same with different text. And then the ones on the right are different. This is so adorable. I love this water lily. Look at these butterflies. Yeah, so that's that. And then we have a like a fairy tale book. Again, of course, not all of these are going to be usable, but some of them are. I mean, she's so cute, isn't she? <laughs> these are gorgeous. And I think it's cute to have different styles of drawings in a junk journal. So not all from one book, but a variety that just makes it more interesting. She's cute. These animals are cute. <laughs> Look at his expression. Duh. <laughs> Some more 
animals here. Oh, look at that, that. Yeah, all very, very usable. Look at these, it's an animal quiz. And then these are some of the ones I got at the same place, but I've had them for a longer time. Yeah, I have these bunnies. I, I've copied some of these images. And of course you can make copies of the images you like. If you have an issue with tearing the pages out of the book, I get that. But then of course you can't sell them unless the books are old enough. I mean, you can't sell the junk journals because that's a copyright issue unless you check out the book and see when it was published because every country, it's difficult. Every country has different regulations on copyright laws and it is sometimes not easy to figure it out. So do be careful if you make copies of book images. I'm going to just use the original images and not worry about any copyright issues. See, like this is again a completely different style, but there's something fun about it. This is adorable. And then we have another children's book with many different styles in it. I've used a lot of these images already. Mostly, I think, yeah, <laughs> mostly to make dies with and to take whole pages out and make coin envelopes out of them. That's one of my most favorite, favorite things. Maybe we'll do that with this one, actually. Now that I see that, that's a very good thing to do with that one or even for this one. That's something to do with large book images. Well, I guess it depends on how large you want your coin envelope to be. <laughs> Yeah, so you get the idea. So now I hope you know where to find them. So let's make some book page ephemera. So let's start off with this one. So I'm gonna tear out the page. I just want to cut off the white here. You could cut, of course, the edge straight. I don't think I'm going to bother. Okay, now this is going to be a tall, thin pocket. I want her, of course, to be on one side of the pocket. I don't want to lose her. So I'm going to fold it so that she is more or less in the middle. So I will just fold this in. And then fold this in. Just folding enough so that these meet. Now we can see, yeah, that's perfect. Then I will just fold the bottom up. And the top down, making sure not to fold where her head is. <laughs> yeah, so that's what the front will look like. Love that. So now all we do is we fold it apart again and we cut away all the flaps that we don't need, which are the outer parts of the flaps. So we want a trapeze shape here. So I'm gonna cut here right where the folds are and I'm gonna cut away the excess flap on either side. And on the top, I could do the same thing. I just could do slanted piece shape in the middle. That's one option. But I think I'm gonna do it differently. I'm gonna make slanted corners or rounded corners, I should say. So I'm gonna cut straight right where the crease is and then cut away the excess from the outer flaps. On this and this flap, I'm actually cutting a little bit lower, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch, like one or two millimeters lower than the crease. That just makes it easier afterwards. I forgot to do that on this side. Now we're going to fold this over, but we're not going to make a crease here. We're just folding it so that these two corners line up. And then we take our scissors and we just round our flap like that. And so that way both sides will be equal. Next, I'm just going to take a glue and put some on the flap here, just on the top where it meets. Important not to put glue too far in because if you do, you're gonna glue your pocket shut. <laughs> you want to make sure that you have a hole here. <laughs> And then we just glue this bottom flap. 
And there's our pocket, but what I want to do is I want to put a half circle here in the top. There. So there's our first piece of ephemera. Next, I'm going to use an image from this children's book, which is this cute squirrel. Since we're in autumn, I think that is very fitting. I'm gently going to tear this out. Now with this, of course, we could do something similar to this. I mean, the squirrel is right in the middle, so we could do the same, but let's do something different. For this, I do want a straight edge here, so I'm just going to take my ruler. I don't want to use my paper trimmer because my experience is that they don't work well with, with vintage papers. They tear pretty badly. Full pages like this, of course, are perfect to make envelopes out of. It's super, super easy. So we just turn it around. We fold it up. Of course, you always have to see where your focal point is. I definitely want to have him as a full image on my envelope. So I will try to fold it accordingly. So I will fold this part up. This is the simplest envelope ever. And then we fold the flap down, but we don't fold all the way to where the crease is. We want there to be a space in between. So for example, like this. And it's super cute because we have the sun and the moon here. We have these flowers here. Yes, they're upside down, but it doesn't matter. And then we have our squirrel right here. You can leave the corners as they are. We could actually round them the same way we did with the coin envelope. Let's do that. Or you could just take your corner rounder as well. This edge here we could leave as it is or we could use again a circle punch to make an indent in the middle. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my envelope punch board and just make an indent like that like this, because I think that looks really cute. That's just another way to use your envelope punch board. And I do that a lot more often than ever use it as an envelope punch board. <laughs> I actually never do, thinking about it. And now all we would have to, of course, do is either glue or sew these two edges down, and I will just sew them down, because I like the extra texture. I happen to have like a golden thread in my machine, so that's just what I used. Now you could of course decorate this further, but to be honest, I love it just the way it is. I actually think decorating this further would distract from the cute images that we have here. Another obvious thing to make with the book page is of course a tag. So if you have an image that lends itself to being cut out in a vertical way, like this one for example, that's a great option to make a tag. So let's try that. So this paper is not that old. I think this will cut very well with my paper trimmer. So we're going to make a super simple tag. So I'm gonna cut it as wide as I can. So until the writing starts. And I kind of want him more or less centered. So I'm gonna cut off a bit on the other side. I cut off a bit on the bottom and a tiny bit on the top because I will be adding another piece of cardstock behind it, which will be a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to snip off the corners on the top one. Then we turn the triangle around to get exactly the same shape on the other side. So there's our tag shape. We could leave it as it is but I think it is rather flimsy, so I would like to back it with a piece of cardstock. So I tried to find something that would work with the colors we have here, of course, and I think both of these work, but actually I think this one is too busy with the white, so let's not use that one. This one I think works really well, and this is from the Tim Holtz Memorandum Paper Stash. So I'm just going to add some glue here in the middle and then stick that down so that there is a border equally on these two sides. And then I'm going to trim it down. Again, I will be sewing around this tag. If you don't plan on sewing around it, please glue it down properly all the way to the edges. I'm actually going to start my cutting here so that I don't cut where I don't need it. Same thing here. And then I'll just snip off the corners again. 
And now before I sew around this, I want to see what kind of a tag topper I could add because maybe I can just sew that on while I'm sewing around it. I found this table runner at my Goodwill as well. This was uh, five euros. And I started cutting it up. I think the fabric is absolutely gorgeous. And I think this orange will work really well with the orange of this cutie. So I'm just going to take my pinking shears to cut out a rectangular piece. And again, I'm just going to secure it just a tiny bit with my glue. that and I will wait a few minutes to let that dry a little bit because I don't want to mess up my sewing needle. So I've just sewn around it with a zigzag, with a zigzag stitch once. There's the back and we have a beautiful tag. Next let's use an image out of this book and I thought this one would be nice maybe for a pocket or a side pocket like this. So again, this one is new enough that I can cut it. The paper is sturdy enough. And now I'm just wondering because of the beak, we could just cut around the beak because I don't want the pocket to be super wide. So I think what I'm going to do is just cut approximately until the beak and then do the same thing from the other side, making sure that I'm aligned. And then I will just cut around the beak like that and we can maybe again yeah let's just make a half circle in the middle and then again i'm going to stitch around it here if you don't want to stitch then actually you're ready to go and you can just glue it on the three sides into your journal as a side loading pocket so this is what it looks like once i've stitched around the edge so that is our number four looking at this book I found an image which I think would be great for a vertical belly band. So again, super simple. I want my belly band to have raggedy edges. So I'm not just going to cut it. I'm going to tear it with my tearing ruler. I have some of these linked below for you. You'll have to check the links. I have various links because sometimes these are really hard to find. You just have to see where they are available at the moment. Some of the links are not this metal one, but the transparent ones. I actually wish I would have a transparent one because that way I could see where I'm tearing a lot better. So I think this is a bit long, so I'm going to tear it down some more. Depending on how strong your book page is, you could then either just glue it in your book on the top and the bottom like this, or we can strengthen it with another piece of cardstock as well, or even use another piece of book page to strengthen it. That works as well, but maybe I can find a piece of cardstock that will complement the colors from here. How about this super colorful one? I think that would make a really fun border around our belly band. And in case you're wondering, this one is from this paper pad from Dovecraft. Dovecraft Premium. It's called Bohemian. And you can see all the designs here. Again, I'm just going to glue this down in the middle because I'm going to sew around it again. So again, if you're not going to sew, then just glue down the whole surface. And next, I'm just going to trim the edges again so that they are more or less even on all the sides. So there's what that looks like after the sewing. Let's do another very quick and simple one. So going into this book, I have another one which is a full page. That is like the easiest thing you can do. You carefully tear it out. And then you make this whole page into a pocket by either having the opening of the pocket on the top or on one of the sides. So when we glue this into our journal, let's just take another book. Let's say this was our journal page. If we put it on this side, for example, all we would need to do is just glue it down on these three sides. If we're going to make it into a side loading pocket, 
or of course then we glue it on these three sides if it's going to be a top loading pocket and again we can either put like a half circle into it or use the envelope punch board in my case i'm going to make it a side loading pocket from this side so this is going to be on the left side because there's less going on here and i'm going to use my one and a half inch circle punch to punch a half circle in the middle ish and then again i'm going to sew around these three edges just to make it look like it will have been sewn onto the page but of course i'm just going to glue it into my journal just like this so i've sewn around the three edges and of course if you don't want to determine yet on which side of your book page you want to put this pocket or whether it's going to be a top or side loading pocket then you just tear out the page and leave it as it is until you know on what page you're going to add it in your journal and then make that decision as to where to put an opening or where to sew around it or whatever this is probably the easiest piece of ephemera you can make from a beautiful children's book page the next super easy idea is a tuck spot so from this book I think this image would be very suitable because I think if we just cut it here and then we even have space to make two flaps, that would be a perfect tuck spot. So let's tear this out. Then I will cut my triangle and then I can just make the two flaps. You could use a scoreboard if you have one. And you don't have to make the flaps. You could just cut your triangle and glue that down. But the flaps make for a roomier pocket. Now I'm just going to cut off the excess here and I'll cut a slant here and I'll cut a slant here. So now we have this one tuck spot and we would just glue down those flaps onto our page. We could tuck something inside. Next, let's make a little mini booklet to tuck into a pocket or envelope or something. I'm going to choose this image for that and I will show you why, but there's many different... Oh, I'm going to lose him. That's always so sad. <laughs> well, we won't really lose him, but we won't see him that well. So first, I'm going to cut off the bottom. I don't need the text. I just want a small little booklet. Then I'm going to fold this in half and I think with these images, yeah, it works perfectly that we have one image on each side. But of course you can also find an image that wraps around. It doesn't have to be two separate images, but this just kind of worked out perfectly. I'm just going to trim this off here from the back side. And then we can just use some random scraps to make like a mini junk journal or a mini notebook to have some more journaling space. So these are just random papers that I had in my scrap box. They're obviously not all the same size. See, we still have him. We don't really lose him, thankfully. If these scraps are too random for you, then of course, go ahead and just insert some blank pages, notebook pages or copy paper or copy dyed pa paper. I just think it's fun to have weird and wonky pages in here. So there's several ways we could now attach these. Obviously we can do a very traditional three hole pamphlet stitch by hand. We could just put two staples in here, or we can just sew through it with our sewing machine since, you know, this is not bulky, so that would work. And I think that's, again, what I will do. I did use large paper clips to secure the pages in place while sewing through the middle. So now we can take these off. Now we have a super cute, tiny junk journal to stick in a pocket tuck spot envelope wherever you want. <laughs> Let's make another simple pocket. I chose this image here. And of course, when you have cute images like these flowers here or these mushrooms, what I would do is just cut them out and then use them in collages. 
because they're really cute. So I'm first going to determine the width of the pocket. I'll just tear that. And then I'm actually going to make this into a double pocket. I don't really care about the frog. <laughs> so I'm going to be folding that up so that we don't see the guy like that. And then I'm going to fold this part in and that will also make this part sturdier and i'm gonna fold it so that i have some of the back book page sticking out on top and i'm going to round off these corners with my large paper uh with my large corner rounder and i could do the same for the top do i want to do that i'm not sure yeah why not let's do the same on the top Wondering if I should add an indent. Yeah. And now I'm going to sew along here and he or actually I'm going to sew around these three sides. Again, if you don't sew, all you need to do is to glue these sides. And then when you put it in your journal, oh look at this gorgeous picture. Let's pretend this is our journal. If we put it in here, we're just going to glue on the back side here these three sides. And that way we have a double pocket, one on top and one here. Or we just glue it again on these three sides. And we have a side loading and a top loading pocket. So there's what it looks like once it's sewn around the three edges with this exact stitch. And finally for ephemera piece number 10, I'm going back to my squirrel book. And we're going to make a flip up paper pad. We're going to use this as a cover going to need a strip again I think that's perfect I don't need to do anything else with that and then I'm going to take my box of coffee dyed paper scraps and I'm going to find some that have a similar shape to this but I don't want them all perfectly behind this shape I want them fanned out a little bit and peeking out and everything so let's see which ones we can find we have these two avocado dyed ones this is a piece of coffee dyed wallpaper. There's some coffee dyed ledger paper. And some very crumply coffee dyed paper. And I think that's enough. So now I just have to tear them into the sizes that I need. So I have five pieces and I'm just going to layer them. I think I want this one on the top. Then we'll take an avocado dyed one. Then I'll take this short one with the wallpaper. And then this coffee dyed one, the crinkly one. And this avocado dyed one. So that it's like this. I'm simply going to staple this. And then let's see if I can find something to cover up those staples. You could just add a piece of scrap paper over it. You could add some washi tape over it. But for some extra texture, I'm going to add some lace to it. And I think I'm going to go with this blue one. Yep. Right. That is going to be cute. Like that. And now we have a little pad for some writing space. So let's see what we came up with so far. We have our coin envelope. We have our other regular envelope. We have a tag. We have our side loading pocket. We have our belly band. We have our full page pocket. We have our mini junk journal. We have a tuck spot, a double pocket, and lastly, our flip up paper pad. Obviously, you can do this with any theme. You can do this with nature themed books anything you want, any theme that strikes your fancy. This is just one of many, many options. I think this is already an awesome start for a junk journal. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs>